Hello, this is Eddie, Five Days again. We're uh, working on the PT Cruiser again. Uh, we're going to do uh, some rear brakes. Um, just wanted to share with you guys on how to do it. It's uh, early in the morning. Uh, we're going to be breaking some daylight, so uh, bear with us here. Um, first thing I want to go over, we're going to chuck our wheels. I have an old jack, there, a jack stand we're going to use to put up on the tire. Anything, man, a rock, log, anything to stop the car from rolling on you, okay? This is a front-wheel drive car, so once you get that, um, well, I guess it's going to stop, isn't it? Uh, it's going to be in park. I guess it's going to be all right. But, um, well, this is the standard, so that's not the case. We have the parking brake on this one. And besides that, man, only safety first. Well, yeah. So, we're going to get it jacked up here. Put some jack stands underneath it. So we want to get that thing. I always like to try to get it up in like right up in the middle, um, and then get this thing. To, you see how it's got the, the little nubs? I like to get it right in the center of that. But like so. I'm looking for it. See how see how I got it like got the nubs up in the middle of that bracket that that, that cross member there. I guess you call it the rear axle. <laughs> um, but then you just jack it up, and we're off the ground here. Well, we gotta get a jack standing underneath it. Up underneath the spring over there. You want to get it like dead center that spring does. Pull back on it. I'm trying to get it on that back. Oh, so that. you want this part in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's about right there. Okay. Well, good. Now what we're going to do? We're going to drop this down onto them jack stands. Okay. Just ease it down. Drop it. Actually, going to push this down. I'm going to do it. We'll drop this down. This jack stand likes to uh, be quick on us, so we're gonna have to watch out here. There it goes. Oh, I, was I don't like side. it to do that. I don't like to have it drop down so fast, but um, um it is what it is. We'll put that back underneath there. Now I like to whenever I'm doing a, whenever I'm working on brakes and stuff. Um, I think safety first. You know, is always a good rule to have. So what I always do is I'll go, I'll safety everything up. I'll let it sit on the safety, and sit everything up, and I'll let it sit on it. And if I got it, if I got the jack where I can, where I can, where I don't have to move it, I'll leave the jack there, and, and just in case. Okay, so if something gives way, then it can catch that jack. You know, I make sure the pressure is here. Make sure the pressure is on the jack stands, but then I, I'm, I leave the jack in place so that you know, um, for any reason, you know, if it rolls, whatever, and then we have an extra extra something to catch on. I've been in our vehicles, uh, and it's usually the heavier it is, it's usually the heavier it is, the more chances of things like that happen. And I've worked on vans and big trucks and and um get moving around you know moving transmissions and stuff and then then sometimes some jacks didn't start to move on you you know um, uh, yeah so just just a little, little tidbit there now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and pull these uh, tires off here and get moved around and, and to get that one here Well, I goofed and I probably should have broke the tire loose here before I did all this, but now I get to break it loose whenever uh, I have it in the air. Well, emergency brakes on. I got I, 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 smarter, I was smarter than I thought. Um, emergency brakes on, so I get to just crack them loose here. Oh, 
Okay. You guys know it was a uh, a three quarter socket. We went ahead and released the emergency brake, obviously. Hey Eddie, what you using there, bud? Pry bar. And what else you need using to take off this cap? Oh, just kind of whack a few times. Just kind of bust it loose. Yeah. Can you use uh, any kind of wedge, or is a pry bar probably the best option? Oh, um, get your big old screwdriver. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm not expecting somebody in their backyard to feel this, you know? So, hey, you never know. Sometimes you gotta do it in your backyard because you can't afford the mechanic. Yeah, look at the look at that break where we got here. And I remember you guys you guys remember the last time we broke into this? That's that's how much pad we have left. So we just did this in the nick of time. There's almost it was gonna go be metal to metal pretty quick. So we dug into it just perfect. Yeah. All right, so let's keep pulling it apart here. These little tabs here. Um, just this thing. Put this back on here. You know, kind of, it's kind of easier just to go ahead and put it all back in place. Make sure it's in place before you tear it down. For one thing, so you can see what you did. See what it's supposed to, you know. See, see where it's supposed to be, you know. So yeah, where you get a uh, good idea of what's supposed to look like whenever you try putting them back together. Yeah. Yeah, this part has got some good old-fashioned needle nose pliers, cause well, sometimes the easier way is the fun way. Just squeezing on that that little spring-loaded clip here, and there they go. You just got to pull it straight down. We do it side to side sometimes. The last thing we need you guys to do is break these things. Yeah. See, I'm squeezing down on it. Release the tension on it. Make sure you hold your brake down. Even if you get your finger on the back side to hold it steady. Because there's a little pin on the back side. There they go. I don't think there's going to be too much fun putting them back on. This is the fun part, taking it apart. It always sucks to put it back. Well. Almost always. <laughs> well, hopefully that's not the case today. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay, now I pulled that down. I took that loose. over the top and you can almost get the whole assembly out like that okay now what I want to do is go ahead and I, I'd go ahead and clean everything up just like it kind of sits if you can if you can get it apart like this that's an amazing job right there <laughs> without it coming all apart on you um, uh, Never mind. It's still gotta come apart all the way apart. I'm getting ahead of myself here. There's your spring.
Give him a step by step, boss. What'd you do to take that apart? Well, start at the bottom. Start at the bottom spring. I work my way up both sides. Some of it just comes apart as you pull it apart, you know? The main thing is to know what's gonna go, how it's gonna go back together is the biggest deal. You got the new brakes out so we can show them how your brakes should look compared to. I will show that here before long. Now, I do believe on these pads, this, this piece comes with the new brake. I may be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure this piece comes with the new brake uh, on this particular setup. Now, I know on um, PT Cruisers, there's different versions of this, but on this particular version, if it looks like this, if the pad looks like this, then, um, then um, you should, I'm pretty sure it comes with it. All right, um, now I would tell you that it's, it's smarter probably before you start spraying the spray um, for cleaning up this stuff, to go ahead and just take an air tool uh, and just, if you got an air compressor, just blow off, blow everything off real quick. You know, you'll get a lot, you'll get further really fast. If you just go ahead and blow it off and then go ahead and start doing your cleaning, so. Classic bristle brush. Something like that, or uh, what was it? Even a toothbrush would work, but it would take a bit longer. Yeah, a toothbrush is going to take a really long time. Yeah, I almost want to go ahead and get you a brush. But if you don't want to get yourself one, toothbrush will do just fine. Yeah, I could have probably even get into some of them smaller places. Notice I'm not having to spray a whole bunch of this. As long as I just, you know, I hit it. And I go over with the brush, and I can hit it again. You want to break it loose, and you can hit it with that brush. That helps a lot. That What's way, your personal favorite brand of brake cleaner, by the way? It all works. <laughs> now, don't look at me like a technician on this stuff, man. I'm not. I'm no, you know, Larry. Yeah, I would have said. I'm not no Eric. Okay. Uh, you take me as like the guy in his backyard doing this stuff, because that's basically what I'm doing. You know, the driveway. You know, I don't have no shop or nothing. But uh, Eric, you got enough tools to have one. <laughs> but you, you take, you take it, you become a technician. Um, you kind of take a lot of the same. Uh, you know, they, they kind of, you know, a lot of the stuff kind of goes hand in hand, especially electrical. I mean. Um, I'm dealing with a lot of DC, so it all kind of just goes right across. I mean, and you got the mechanical, you got brakes on a washer, you have, you know, idlers. It's, it's, it's hand in hand. They kind of go hand in hand, you know. Now, if you remember what these bad boys look like beforehand, there's a reminder. 
All that gunk down there. You'd be surprised what a little bit of elbow grease can get you. And this is kind of actually. All right. Um, just go. All right, guys, we're going to cut this short because my battery's running out here. Um, now, I'm going ahead and cleaning these up, obviously. Um, using a brush. We'll take a rag and wipe it up when we get done. We're gonna do both pads like that. Um, you wanna take a little bit of, uh, I don't know, sandpaper or something like that and clean these surfaces up right there where the brake pad hits, okay? You want that to be a good flush surface for that to hit against. Um, we are gonna get these uh, brake rotors turned, okay? You take them to O'Reilly's or AutoZone or whatever auto parts store you have locally or um, somebody that does brakes and stuff and they'll charge you like, you know, anywhere from you know, a dollar to ten dollars, you know, per drum to have these turned. And what they do is they they cut the surface, they take like, you know, th ten thousandths off that. And I know you, I don't know if you can see the little, little uh, ribs and stuff in there, but all that rib, all them ribs you go to put a new you know set of pads in there that's gonna wear that pad kind of funny and you're just gonna carry it to the next one um, it makes them wear faster um, nobody wants their brace to wear out sooner than they need to <laughs> uh, so you take take it just a few bucks you know and get your stuff turned um, that's going to be it for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surface these, okay? Um, take a little of uh, my sanding uh, deal to it. Um, I'm going to clean all this, wipe it all down. And then um, we'll be back once we get these turned, okay? We'll pull both sides loose and we'll get them uh, once we get the get these turned here I'll show you the brake pads and we'll keep going from there all right thanks and, um, we're going to uh, uh, swap phones here uh, try it out to see what it looks like um, uh, we, maybe we're shooting with it more often I don't know uh, it's got some different settings to it we're gonna see what happens um, We um, we cleaned it all up. We wiped it up. Okay. Now I'm gonna point this out. I, I'm I, I'm an idiot, guys. Don't do as I do on some of this stuff. If you guys obviously see that you do something that's not right, then don't do it. I should have put down some cardboard. Okay. And as soon as I did it, I kind of realized it, but I was too late and I was involved in the middle of it. Um, that won't happen again. <laughs> all right. But we're gonna clean these up. You see, they're rusted on those. You have to clean them up a little bit. I mean, you could even like, you know take a grinder and stuff to if you wanted um, well I wouldn't use a grinder because you don't want to pit it out you don't want to go and, and you want that surface to be true right there but you don't want it catching your brakes either so use some uh, somewhat fine grit right now I believe we are using a hundred grit sandpaper yeah about there would be perfect anything less than that's all right too Basically what we're trying to do here is just take off that rust and get it smoothed back over. But um, clean it up. And we're going to come back with some lube on it. Some, uh, well, you guys don't have to watch for sand here. Okay, so we're going to wipe our stuff up here. And um, all right, all right, guys. Um, I want to go over some stuff here. Um, yeah, you know, whenever I was growing up, 
Now, I never lubricate the brakes, okay? Uh, which is nothing bad on Dad, because um, Dad did an awesome job. I never seen any problems with what it is, you know? But um, get you some oh, silicone paste, okay? And uh, you need to lubricate your, your, your the joints, okay? Where the brakes contact. Not too much, just a little bit. It helps protect the surface too. And this stuff's good for like bulb grease, you know. And it's just some smart stuff to have around. It's good for you know electrical connections. It's good stuff to have, you know, in your toolbox for whatever. That's only really used for protection on these things here. And trust me when I say working with them, this man used this stuff on almost everything. It actually works good. I mean, that's why I started using it. Put a thin layer on it. When you go to put brakes together here, we're gonna use it on your brake joint, all the joints in the brakes. You know. There's a little lubrication on our spots here. You don't gonna get this on the pad itself, okay? Now I said it, don't put it on the pad itself. Okay, get, get overzealous with this stuff, man, and cause you more problems than, than uh, you wanted to start with. So basically, you just got to gently brush it on everything but the pad? Yeah, well, all your joints, all the all the contact points except for the pad itself. Well, heck, that looks like the entire thing, if you ask me. Oh, it's away from that. <laughs> And then, like, try to get it up in there. Try to get it up in there a little bit. Make sure you wipe off, get your excess off of that. Let's get the excess off. Sorry, guys, I'm pulling out a picture on you. Oop, well, I'm sorry about that, folks. My camera's a little bit stranger. It tried to adjust itself. But we're going to put it right back to normal. Oop, well, right there we go. We like to use phones for this, and my phone's a little bit different than his. Mine has two camera modes for the front and fat back of camera. And, uh, well... The back camera just tried kicking in for no reason. I think it's because my finger's just a little bit too close to the button for it. It's a good idea to do this stuff, you know. We've got these joints and everything. I mean, it's just. Seems like everything will just work better that way, you know?
and I would spin that down on top of that, get lubricated on the new threads there. Now it almost wipe off your excess. You don't want to have a ton of this and cause that thing to develop like a siphon or a, a suction against anything. Uh, it's good to have lubrication, lubrication on those threads, but then again, it's you only want a thin layer. Amazing what little lubrication on this stuff does. You know, um. okay, we just about prepped everything here. Now here just about comes the most fun part of all this, putting every little bit back together. Like I was saying, your new brakes will come with that on the on that, and also that's the difference on the pad on one side. wasn't that much difference. Um, but now on the other side, that's the difference. About eighth of an inch. Apart right there. So. Yeah, about an eighth of an inch extra padding on the new one. So it was definitely, in, it was messed up in a bind there, it looks like, somehow. I, I guess when I put it back, back together last time, I must have knocked it out or something. Um, which doesn't really make sense. But hey, I guess it happened to happen. Can't argue with what the obvious is. That's just some proof that no matter how much he believes it, he ain't perfect at this. <laughs> uh, Although he's way better at it than I am, I will tell him that right now, because I would have given up about one third of the way into this. But I suppose that's what we're here for. We're trying to help out those that don't want to spend all those major dollars over at the mechanic wants to order all these little parts and do it for themselves. Which, there's nothing wrong with that. Just know that you're going to have patience and trust and believe. I don't have any. He's got way more than I do. I think we're gonna we're gonna figure something else out here. We're gonna have to make our own tool or something. Well, we end up making this little tool here. Um, little fork here. Get us around this. Get us uh, in between the spring and this end here. Got to excuse my compressor. I decided I was gonna act up once we start making this tool here. We've got to replace a valve in it, you know. I 
I guess we're going to have to make it a little wider. Well, we got a little wider. Well, for that'll work. At some point, we're just going to ruin our screwdriver. <laughs> it's not like we're ever going to be able to use it to drive in a screw ever again. There we go. See that? Now we're up under that bad boy. Now we've got some control. Okay. Now we can, we can do a couple different things here. Okay. Um, I got my pliers. Okay. That I can use to make it even bigger. Once I get up underneath them. See, I can use it to get up underneath them. I think on this deal, I think I'm just going to go ahead. Let's just try to go ahead and put this on. Now I think it's in my way. Nope. We'll just do it like this. Like so, pliers. We'll build up the distance here. Not fun. I'll get this video done. I'll do all the uploading. I'll make the video. And somebody will write down in the comment section. Well, you should have just done it like this. Of course, that's what. You know what? That can be like, um, feel free and look at the comments in another video, because there was one person that was giving them heck about it. What was it? A uh, back panel? Oh. Why don't you just take off the back panel instead? Oh my goodness. You're doing magic. That's derp -der. Basically what it was, is <laughs> a whole bunch of hate mail, calling them a wizard and whatnot, because, um... They wanted him to take off the back panel like they normally would. Well, I don't even know if that guy was mad or not. Oh, he was a little bit butthurt. He's just jealous. He was booty bruised because the very next comment, that guy was praising you. The first guy was hating on you. Yeah. Basically, he was replacing a drain. And someone was giving him crap because he thought he would have to take off the back panel for it. And what was your comment I for it? I don't want to go over all that. Why would you even have to do it? You would never have to, practically. You're being practical about it, you would never have to. But yeah, this isn't a dream pump. 
I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, that's the whole point. That's why I made the video. was to show you you don't have to. Uh, the factory on it wanted you to uh, take apart that whole front panel. And the problem is, if you take apart that front panel on a Bosch, is it'll never go back the way that it was at the factory. Like, you can try, and you get close, you can put some glue on it, you can put some makeup on it, you know, that's still a pig. If you don't have to take it apart in the first place, you have to put no makeup on the pig. You know? That's all I'm saying. Saves you a lot of time and effort, you know? You don't have to worry about that stuff in the first place. All right, we're back to, back to this one. You need a second set of hands there, bud? I don't know what I need, to be honest with you. Million dollars, tax-free. Man, that always works. Right. That definitely helps. I need a lot of... Uh, my problems taken care of. I feel like the first thing you did just end up doing is just buying a way bigger toolkit than you already got. Yeah. Everybody wants snap on. <laughs> Everybody wants snap ons. Shoot. Oh, look at this, guys. I got it figured out right here. Watch this. Okay. See it? I'm probably get some pliers. I'm probably get some pliers. Clamp down. See it? It's gonna happen once. It's only gonna happen once. Okay, twice. It's hard grabbing them pliers like that, I'll tell you that much. Alright. Alright, I'll keep help. Ah, it hurts the hands. Hey, look at that. I'll take you that. That's right there is how you do it. Look at that. There ain't no complaints there. Now, with our luck, it's going to be on the wrong direction. Nope. <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Shut okay. your mouth. Shut your mouth. We are okay. not going. Not the case. Not here. Not today. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to knock it off. That's what's going to happen. And trust me, you're going to see something like a hang in there sign with the cat because there's going to be a whole lot of hostile words yelled. You ever see that video with the cat? You know, or... Well, guys, just to show proof nobody's perfect, I'm going to have to go back in my own videos and look at how to put this thing back together. So, uh,. Don't mind bearing with me here. Okay, so I'll put that on there like so. I think honestly, uh, like in a corner anywhere, you should put like a little photo of what it's supposed to look like. I believe it's that direction. <laughs> See, because that's going to come up high like that and actuate the. Uh, the brick adjust. The brick adjuster goes in there. You can see how you got that that air? So this is going to drive into it and push it and adjust it. Okay?
this is what we got so far. Okay. Okay. You with me yet? Not like, um, they could really talk to you. This is a pre recorded video, after all. Oh, well. But if you guys want to talk to us, feel free and leave something down in the comment section. We'll read them just about as fast as you guys put them out there. <laughs> you should be a comedian. Shoot. Alright, so. You got the spring here, okay? You got the spring here hooked to that. This goes on the back uh, uh, pin. This sits on top of the top pin, all right? You put your screw, or adjust your screw all the way towards that, uh, which that is a, I think these are left-hand threads. Um, you hook that hook right there, all right? And now you have your whole assembly. And then what you're gonna do is gonna go and come over here and transfer it all, okay? I'm just gonna put it back behind here. So you're gonna come back behind here and assemble it all at once, kinda. Alright? You gotta get this piece inside of there. Hmm. Must be like this. Put them on the back side, like so. Try this again. You get it loaded up like that. Actually, you want to go ahead and have this in place. But here's what. Uh, Okay. 
It's going to take more than one hand to do this, guys. So, uh, Eddie has discovered the hard way. I've done this before. I my first rodeo. And uh, I bet they were a nuisance the first time. Oh, yeah. These things are never fun. Never fun, but they can be done. Alright, I'm gonna try this again just like so. Take two. And. Action. So we're just gonna wipe my hand just like so, and none of this ever happens. See, look, now he's getting it done. Alright, here we go. If only it was that easy. That's what we're getting. Just kidding. Sassy now. Sass is my middle name. Yeah. Just kidding. It's Chancellor. See, I just got it. Like, it just, just happened. Explainers, it just happened. Like you just get it, you just get it in place, and you take off with it. See, and uh, that's the beautiful power of editing. Well, I can't show I can't show all my moments on this because I spent way too much time. I can tell you guys already. Again, the power of editing. You can take a three-hour job and make it thirty minutes. <laughs> uh, was it three hours? It's been almost three hours now. Wow. We haven't been recording for three hours, but we've been recording for about 45 minutes total. Wow. Well, heck, I think longer than that because we got almost 30-something uh, minutes on yours. And right now we're working on 40 minutes on mine. And we got to condense this down to 15 minutes. And we will do it for you guys. Because trust me, you guys don't want to be sitting there watching a three-hour-long video. It's not fun. Heck, I don't even think most people want to watch a three-hour-long movie. They make fun of them. My, my fiance, my, my wife, uh... Nice save. Okay, this is... Well, guys, I'm going to say if you guys had a... A C clamp at this point, I would put it on one side, but I got an extra set of hands. So we're going to stop recording here for a minute and uh, we'll be right back. Um. And we're back. We've officially established that I can do this with one hand and uh, record with the other. Now, hopefully, I don't screw up. See if we can do this an easy way. See if there's an easy way to do it. <laughs> Working on a car or something easy. Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever used that since before. You know, there was tools at Harbor Freight that I just almost got. Which I don't even know if they'd help with these clamps. I'm not trying to drop their name or anything. The last time I tried to do that, they uh, I ended up having a, uh, a uh, shop floor full of, uh, or not full, but oil on a shop floor. Oh my goodness. What are the dogs doing? So now we're using our, uh, oop. 
what would you call that, like a tuning fork that we made. And I would know what it is, because I was a, ah, not a pickle fork, that's more like a tuning fork. I was in band and choir long enough to know what the heck the thing is. That's a pickle fork. I thought a pickle fork had uh, three prongs on it. It's a pickle fork. It's a pickle fork. That we made out of a screwdriver. Alright, let's try this again. See that? That's a trick behind that, guys. Basically, what he just used right there was a set of uh, pliers there, clamped down on them, and just slide that back in. Well, I, I clamped on, I didn't really clamp them on too much. I pushed down on the brake with them. And I'll show you again. So I kind of use the bottom of the pliers and then to grab them where they'll hold and then I push down on them on that to get that flakes down. Make sense? Hope so. Okay. I just got one more. But after that, all you're going to have to do is just repeat it for the other side. So technically, uh, how do you know if you need to get your new brakes, Eddie? Well, you got to check them. There's one back here. I'll, I'll show you guys here in a minute. Um, as soon as I get this done, I'll show you how to see if you need brakes. I was gonna say, is there any like sounds that you'll hear while you're driving? Like how some people got those really loud, That's obnoxious, actually, squeaky brakes? To be honest with you, that is too late. And that's front brakes. If you're waiting until your brakes are cool and you're metal to metal on the rear brake. On the front brake, however, it's your warning shot. So I should probably be changing the brakes on my car sometime soon. Um I don't know. Mine might squeak. Well, there's different kinds of squeaks. I don't think yours are bad. I haven't looked at them too much, I guess. So, another video for another time. Nah, no, just kidding. We're gonna be doing a bunch of brake videos. <laughs> Look at that much. Now, some of these have just like a twist top to them, which is much easier than this. You just uh, get on there and twist it up there. Okay. And they kind of just kind of just move up and down on them. That way they kind of seat in. We got a handle for this adjuster here. Uh. Ooh. I'm a 
camera did it again. There we go. Yeah, I'm my finger too close to the uh, double camera setting. That looks good. Like we did it. Now we just have to go, we're gonna go ahead and wait for our rotors to be turned and we'll come back once that's done. Um, and then we'll go over. Now, if you look on the back side of this, go ahead and get on the back side. On this side. Nope. Other side. Whoops. Yep, it's gotta be on this side. Do there. I'm hoping you'll see it. But if you can't, I'm sorry. But from this side, you see that you see it there. Okay. So you'd be seeing the brake pad on the back side. Okay, you take like an inspection an, an inspection mirror, look back there, and then up high, right behind this, right behind this, right behind this adjustment right here, on the back side there's a hole, okay? Yeah, I can see it. It's right about here. Okay. Right in front of where my finger is. You can, you can take like a screwdriver or what they call a brake spoon and go back to once you get your, get your um, drum on here, okay? And you can adjust that out and make the brakes just 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 uh just touch the surface of this okay um maybe just just maybe kind of skim it okay what you want it to do is you, you you almost don't want it to contact but you want it to contact because this surface is going to wear real quick and then then it'll but you want it to be good and close okay um you can even come back after you drive it around for a little bit and then readjust. But uh, you really want it to be close when you do that. Um, here you go. I'm all shaking. <laughs> um, you really want it to be close when you do that. And, and then you can always go in reverse and hit your emergency brake and just real slow. And then uh, that's how you adjust them. So what happens is, is if you look at this, the way this is set up, every time you hit that adjuster, okay, this moves. So actually, I think it's, no, it's actually every time it separates, isn't it? It's every time you hit the brake on this one. Yeah, that's every time you hit the brake on this one. Every time you hit the brake, it pushes those out. Go. I want you to go ahead and hit the brake, and just be gentle with this one. I'm gonna I don't don't push it all the way in because this will blow out the it'll blow out the uh, the cylinders here. Um, just you know, with no effort, okay? It'll blow them out with no effort. Just gently push them in. Let's see what it does here. You see that? You see that moving? Okay, so every time you hit your brakes, hit it again. It's a little slow, real slow. Keep going, Des. Keep going. So on this car, all you gotta do is hit your brakes and then adjust your brakes your rear brakes. Go ahead and keep hitting it. Push it harder. You see it pull, you see it adjust that, that nut? Now to release. Do you see that? So every time you hit them brakes, it adjusts that nut. Do it one more time for them. Do it one more time for them, Des. 
pull it. That's good. And you can let it go. So every time you hit your brakes, they're just that nut. And then push these out further. That is really cool. Actually, that's kind of the first time I've ever seen that. And I always wondered how them adjusted myself. So now we have, now we both know. Um, again, we're gonna come back after we get this uh, uh, this drum done, and uh, we'll show you the final product. All right. Hello. Um, came back here. Got the got them done. Uh, got the drums done here. You know what they're gonna do? What they do is they take a a cutter. And they just they spin this and they they spin the drum on a lathe, and then they just they just cut it evenly so that it's, it gets an even flush cut. So when you bring your when you run your brakes across it, they don't have you know uh, either you, you these can actually warp. Uh, so like you can get them like egg shaped from temperature, uh, from breaking hard that kind of stuff, and. Um, so turning them like that actually takes the egg shape out of them. Um, it also, you know, takes the grooves and stuff. It'll, it'll cause the brakes to wear evenly, and you can st it makes you stop better. So um, we got these turned. Um, it costs thirty bucks for both of them, which is more expensive than what I would have thought. Um, I'm sure that you could probably find something cheaper. Um, so keep an eye out. Um, Next time I'll probably uh, shop around a little further, see if we can find something cheaper. Now I looked them up on eBay. These are uh, thirty-six bucks a piece or something like that for the forum. I imagine you could probably them, probably find it cheaper if you bought them as a set. I didn't really look past that. I just kind of just looked to see how much they were going to be new because you know thirty bucks a set. You know I figured I'd probably just replace them at that. You know so. But we went ahead, we got them turned. Um, we've already got our brake pads. They're on the, on the vehicle. Um, we'll go ahead and show you that. And then um, we'll start, uh, we'll, put them, we'll put the drum on and then start adjusting it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, these are the uh, brakes that we were installing earlier today, but um took ourselves a nice little break for the day and well we've come back to it and we're gonna finish this up for you guys as usual we start these up pretty darn early in the morning as we always do here but pretty darn soon it's gonna be all done back together and well we'll show you guys what the uh, finished result is here all right um first thing you want to do you get this you got your got it done ready to put it back on yeah, you want to make sure everything's, you know, uniform, um, as close to center as possible. Um, you don't want to, like, have one brake pad up like this or the other one like this. You don't want it to look like it's all the way high. Um, you kind of just want to make sure that they're kind of centered as much as possible. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take and test fit everything. Because you've already, because your adjuster, you should have adjusted down at a lower point. Maybe not the lowest point, but a lower point. And then you're going to take and put it on there and kind of test fit it, okay? Just make sure everything slides on there. You know everything rotates freely. Um, now you're going to kind of try to, you're going to see, you see how much slack we have there. That thing don't just sit there and hold up. So we know we got to adjust that thing quite a bit, okay? That thing should almost hold that, that drum on there. So if you go up in here, I want to get closer up here. If you get up in here, right there at that adjuster, okay, there might be a couple ways we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. I got me a little stubby here. I think I figured out a better way to do it to show you guys. I'm just going to get on them little teeth there. I'm going to keep adjusting them. 
what that's going to do is going to bring these these uh, brick pads further apart. Eventually, guys, I'll get me some uh, lights on a pole for situations like this. But right now, we're just kind of starting out and doing what we got. Now, that's quite a bit right there. You can kind of see it in the caliper, how much more, or in the caliper, but the Oh, the cylinder there, rear cylinder. And when I put it on there, it doesn't feel like it's gonna fit. So, I may have too much. But we almost want that. Or we just have too much. Back the other way, you have to lift up on the adjuster with one hand and push the adjuster back at the, you know, your nut the other direction. Which is so close. We want this, so we want it almost. So that's just, it's going on there, but it's just too much. It's just too much. So we'll pull it back off. We'll lift our adjuster. Push our adjuster in just a little further, a nut. Set these to get these brakes to kind of center up up on you. Let's see. Now I want to back a little tighter. Now I'm going to start going a little bit. I'm going to go like a couple teeth at a time, or maybe one tooth at a time at this point, when I adjust.
helpful, is it? Oh, it's a little too tight. Okay, I'll pull it back off here. Now, what you want is where they almost cont where they're. I don't know. This is probably about perfect because you you want them to just kind of uh, just gently graze the surface because both the pad surface and the the drum are going to wear right off the bat. You're going to have just a hair wear right away. About uh, how often should you uh, get your brakes checked or even switch them out, Eddie? Oh, I would say on your rears, you want to you want to take them apart and clean them, um, even once a year, once every two years, something like that, and have all this maintenance because that brake dust and everything it, it 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 stops your brake parts from moving on this stuff. Your front <coughs> brakes are almost maintenance free. Uh, front disc brakes are almost maintenance free. When it comes to this stuff uh but your rear brakes i think there's maintenance and uh, every time i've took uh, uh, just about every time i've gotten to this point with one there's usually some sort of maintenance um because you you're all that dust that they they accumulate it all just sits in there and, and it actually causes the brake parts from it causes mainly your adjusters from from working so what happens is your your brakes never adjust out these, these brake pads never adjust out, and you never get the full performance out of your rear brakes. Um, so you, it's good to take them apart and clean them. Um, I, my opinion is once, you know, a year, once every two years, you know. Yeah, and is that just that for, way. would that just be for a manual front, or does that change, or is that just like a general rule of thumb for all cars? I would think that that's a general rule of thumb if for drum brakes. Um, I don't know. That's my opinion. That's from what I've experienced. Um, I'm not saying that there's probably somebody out there that's more knowledgeable than me on this, on that part of the subject. Um, but from experience, I'm going to say uh, once a year, once every two years, you know. Um, uh, I had a service vehicle that I was working at, you know. It was a Jeep, which they say is kind of hard on the rear brakes. And I had to take that apart every year. And then every time it was just, it was crowded up pretty bad. And it didn't want to adjust the brakes out. Um, but um, then I've had other vehicles that you never, that almost never have to adjust anything. You never have to do anything with them. But it would have been a good, but every time I ended up getting in there, they were so corroded and, you know, or not corroded, but they were so covered in the dust and everything. And you can see that they weren't adjusting properly. You know, had I been, gotten in there earlier, they would have probably been working better. So, I, I, again, I'm going to go back to that rule of thumb with a year, One year every two, two years. And, and, it, and it's a pretty simple job. You don't have to take them all apart, most generally. You know, that's the point of it, is that you don't have to go and do a bunch of work on the maintenance side. If you come in there, you, get, you just, some, you know, you know, break clean, you know, or some a blow-off tool, you know, get in here, blow it all out, check your adjuster, make sure it's working back and forth. Make sure everything's moving back and forth like it's supposed to. Um, and whenever you get that ridge, whenever you take these apart and you get that ridge right here, you can take like a grinder or something and grind that ridge that you build up. Now you don't want to grind on your surface, whatever your surface is that your brake touches. But whenever you build up a ridge right here, that the ridge is hard to put it back together and everything, you can take a grinder or some sandpaper and just grind that ridge off you know, so that you don't have to worry about that ridge. A little bunch of rust, because it's, you know, the rust makes it bigger. Um, but, you know, like I said, you, you take some brake clean, clean it all up, you know, or just take a bull off tool, make sure your adjuster's working, make sure nothing's rusted all apart. These little tabs, right, these little uh, old rods that go through there can rust in two, and this whole thing can just flop in there. Um, Make sure everything's in place because that one was not in place uh, whenever I come back. Um, yeah, I mean, check for leaks. You know, these could be leaking on you, you know. Um, it's just a good rule of thumb to do. Uh, 
that's just about perfect. Now I'm going back the other way. These things are kind of center up once you hit the brakes on them, you know. Um, well, I'm gonna call this good, guys. You can see I'm just touching. Like it's got places it's con. It's 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 just there. It's turning freely, but it's kind of, you know, it's hard to explain the spot that it's it's at. It, it's just before the brakes start causing resistance in, in on your drum okay um and like i said it's gonna once you hit the brakes for the first time with, with these it's gonna it's gonna cause uh it's gonna you're gonna your surfaces are gonna mesh together and you're gonna just it's gonna uh you know eat just a little bit of the surface and it's gonna even up so i think that this is good uh, we're gonna call it good at this point for this I just want to know the good place to get these get this stuff. Uh, I hate to say it, but eBay has got some good prices for you know brake parts and stuff. Um, I think they kind of uh, heck, isn't that where we half, got these ones? They're half or or a, a third or even a quarter of the price that they are locally. So. Usually, you know, all them other places like Rock Auto sell on there and everything, so you're just going to get a good price. Um, oh, well, I know something. How are you going to get that thing back on? Do you just put your tire back on top of it or what? You got to hammer it back in like we did whenever we took it off? Uh, no, because when we took it off, we had to get that that, that ledge. Uh, remember that, what I was pointing out? You're breaking it off. Right here. Okay, rust on this edge and that's what keeps where you have to bang it off and such um, and once you put once you surface it you get rid of that ridge or if you if you take them off to service them then you can grind that ridge off so now all you gotta do is just slap it back on put your tire on over it yeah that's pretty much it's, it's good to go i mean we i went ahead and had them we, we, we hit the brakes you know with, mm -hmm. with everything we got it make sure that your brake pads are centered up in the drum you know as much as possible um so i think we're good to go and that's really guys that's that's more than what you need to do okay you don't have to have that you don't have to do that um that's just a uh, little bit of a security for us yeah a little bit of extra well now you can see that thing holds itself in place there's no real of course, it has a little bit of extra there, but all that'll adjust out if there's anything extra. You see in the adjuster, it'll work. Um, I need to make a little addendum to this. Uh, I said that whenever you hit the brakes, just normally hitting the brakes is where it adjusts the brakes. Um, what adjusts the brakes on this one is the emergency brake. So if you move the emergency brake up and down. That's how you adjust the brakes on it. Um, sometimes I've even had people told you got to put the car in reverse and go backwards. Um, I don't know if that's the case for this, but I do know that I had to hit the emergency brakes for the automatic adjustment to kick in. Um, just so you know, um, so hit that emergency brake a couple of times, you know, and, and that should do the automatic adjustment should kick in. Um, um, it worked for me. Should work for you. Uh, uh, good luck and uh, keep turning those wrenches. Um, well, we're just, like I said, we're going to put our tire on, uh, set our, we're going to torque it on. They are aluminum rims, so we're going to torque it. So we're good to go. Uh, if you like the video, click like. Um, thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to slap that little notification bell so that way you can see whenever Fast Eddie gets something else out.
Y'all have a good one, and, well, keep on turning them wrenches, folks.